This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Bam! We're, 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 we're back. You know all what? Right. I'm going to restart this interview because I just feel like I want yeah the audio okay but i might use other stuff let's go okay hey hi <laughs> hey, hey Josh. Y'all. um i'm josiah but you could also call me queen of the ratchet if you want to call me queen of the ratchet um and this is one of my first my first guest actually yes that's on the queen of the ratchet podcast one of my talented friends, Charles Guy. Hey, 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 uh, Josh Josiah, Queen of the Ratchet. How are you? I am, you know, really living in my multiverses and like quantum jumping. You ever heard of quantum jumping? Absolutely. So I've been like kind of like going through phases of that. Like wow. Just kind of like going out and in of different realities. Yeah. And so thank you for joining me in Absolutely. whatever reality this is oh, wow. that we're being a part of right now. You know, it's a huge honor to be a guest on your platform for sure. Thank mm. you. What well, you want to tell them a little bit about yourself? Well, hello world. Um, my name is Charles Guyton. I am a choreographer, dancer, uh, entrepreneur, creative director here in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm originally from Chicago. And yeah, that brought me all the way out here, you know, seeing how the water is and, you know, what we can make happen, make some magic. What made you start dancing? Okay, well, there's a few things. Um, I would say first it was my sister, my big sister, Latoya. Shout out to Toya. You know, she taught me how to do the chicken head and heel toe. She gave me rhythm. Right. So that kind of got me started. And then I came across this movie called You Got Served. Right and back, yep. Mm -hmm. And when I, I believe when I bought the 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 DVD, the disc, it was a a two disc set, and the DVD had the movie on one side, and on the other side, it had the tutorial for the dances with Dave Scott teaching the choreography from the movie. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I called myself learning it, you know, in my hallway upstairs in the low Bellwood, and I was like, wow, okay. You know, doing the steps and, you know, one thing just led to another. Did a few dance contests at school and, um, yeah, I met this um, extraordinary woman named Vegeta and she introduced me to the world of dance and choreography and, you know, how far things can go, you know, and how much time you put into it, you'll get back in return as a reward, you know, and it's been a rewarding experience for sure. What would you think is your favorite? Because I know you do different styles of dance. Oh, yeah. What is your favorite style Like where you feel like you could just let go and not think? Um, Definitely contemporary. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's my favorite. You know, just to be in a room, you know, a soft, clean, safe space room with, you know, it's just um, a, a, a very freeing experience. You know, you start improv and moving around and dancing with other people. It's a very spiritual experience. You know, dance therapy, is, contemporary is my favorite for sure. Do you think that keeps you going um, when it comes to art? Like with me, right? Um, there is this idea that the artist is um, not seen to have like a career like a doctor Right. Or a lawyer, or one of those type of things. But what we do is really needed, especially yeah. in this life. Yeah, is that what kind of thrives you, or what really thrives you to keep going in this very uh, challenging career? Because it's yeah. not necessarily rewarding all the time. Right. Sometimes you're doing a lot of things for free or underpaid. Right. Um, I think we both had opportunities or shared opportunities where it's like, yes. oh, I'm here and I don't have enough to feed myself or enough for rent. Oh, yeah. You know, I've definitely starved myself um, a thousand times for dance. You know, just the, the ambition and the hustle of, oh, I got to take this class or I got to go train here or I got to buy this ticket so I can go to this audition across the 
freaking country, you know, definitely a lot of sacrifices. Um, but yeah, you know, um, what keeps me going is honestly my students when I'm actually teaching, teaching is, um, probably my favorite realm of the dance world, you know, um, It's very, very rewarding to, um, especially when I'm teaching my kids, just to see them soak up everything that I'm giving them and just pouring into them and they just receive it and they soak it up and they they give it back. And um, it's a a reciprocating reward for sure. (laughs) So the student has become the master and now the master is now teaching the students. Yeah. Do you believe in magic? Absolutely. Okay. Of course. What oh, yeah. makes you believe? Why do you think it's so hard? And I want to get back to the dance thing because it's it's tying into the magic thing. Yeah. Why do you think it's so difficult for a lot of people in this reality to grasp on that magic may be real in this dimension? Um, you know, I that is a good question. I, I feel like um, a lot of I, I, I've, you have to be spiritually connected to tap into your magic. You know, I don't think that there's a, a, a shortcut or a way around it, a way straight to it. You know, you have to really connect with yourself deeply, you know. So when it comes to dance, you know, I feel very connected to my my higher self, my spiritual self. Um because my gift comes from God, you know. So when I'm dancing, I, I feel like I'm dancing for him, you know. Um, I have to dance. I have to keep dancing because I can't waste, you know, my assignment, you know, on not doing what I feel like my purpose on this place, in this realm, on this earth is to do so you know dance has brought me to so many different places so many magical places you know um places i never imagined and it continues to do that you know um i can never hit another stage dancing and i am grateful i'm full of what um, i have experienced um it's very beautiful you know, I've had some really great experiences with dance. I've had some some funky experiences as well. Mm-hmm. You know, some potions don't come out right. <laughs> in acting either, in, 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 yeah. in any aspect of like when you're trying to pursue what you love. Yeah. Um, if there was one thing, because, you know, the Atlanta dance scene is really big here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I've experienced, like, even with being an artist, like, there's definitely, like, two Earths existing in the dance scene. There's uh, the dance artist that does it for the love and the passion and the creativity. And there is the business Mm -hmm. dancer. Right. Which, um, and and, and I think there's a combination of both. And I think that exists in all art is, like, have you ever experienced... When the art got away and it just became work. Absolutely. That was day one. You know, I mean, I I trained in dance. I've been training professionally since I was 14. Um, But I didn't book my first dance job gig until 2016, which was six years ago. Wow. Uh, Yeah. And that experience was so eye opening for me, you know, um, it was a little funky. I definitely got my fair share of the business side of it. Um, I definitely was taken advantage of, um, a lot, you know, especially those first couple of years of my dance career. Um, yeah, between agents and, um, especially in Atlanta and different, you know, choreographers, you know, you have to go through those bad experiences to know because there's no blueprint for commercial dance, you know, Mm -hmm. classical dance. There is, 
Um, but, you know, with the, the hip hop dancers or the commercial gigs, you got to kind of just get out there and learn as you go. And um, you're going to learn as you go because nobody's going to actually teach you because the more they teach you, the less they can use and abuse you. You know what I mean? So, yeah, um, yeah it's definitely a, a, a tier of working choreographers or directors that know exactly what's happening down here and they choose to leave it at that state on purpose because that leaves them where they are. So it's kind of like there is a group of, if you think about politics, right? Right. It's like if you give too many people power, then you lose your power. Right. Do you think that in a sense, and I, and I, I feel that way in a sense where it's like, and I try to put myself in that person's shoes. Like right. if I'm an agent or if I'm a dancer that's really popping or a casting director that's really popping. If I have all this stuff, like this power and everything, and I'm not me, I'm 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 in another avatar body. I'm I'm part of the simulation. Right. Then why with my mindset would I want to give my power away to these people? Right. Even though I do believe that those people that only take, 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 take. We may not see it now, and I was reading a book, but they eventually get what's coming to them. Right. Because the ego can only last so long at the top. And I used to be like one of those people that was like, dang, why is that shit not happening for me? Why is this not happening for me? Or like, what the fuck? Why can't I get there and everything? But I don't know collectively what's going on in that person's mind. Right. What demons are in there, what toxicity is going on, what pain is going on. For sure. Um, What I've experienced is, is like when a person finally starts making money in that business and when they start thriving in that business, then they lose a sense of why they did it. And like, if you think of like someone like, um, what happened to Will Smith, or what's happened right. to like Johnny Depp, or when you think about celebrities that get to this high stature where they're almost worship like gods, right? That's when it's kind of like you get knocked off the pedestal, but then you come back, yeah. Like a like if you're playing Grand Theft Auto or something, it's like, oh yeah, you it's 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 part of the like when you think of the Lion King and they're like. Everything exists in the world of balance. <laughs> in the circle you know? of life. It's the circle of life. So it's like, I've been playing with this notion that there's no idea of good and evil. Like, everything that you went through, right? Right. And the people that took advantage of you made you into this beautiful entity, into this beautiful character that's sitting before you, before me. And the reason why all of those people were in your life, even the good and the bad ones, was to create what is existing right now. Absolutely. So you had to go through all of that. And I don't regret a day of it. You know, um, I learned a lot of things the hard way, but I've kind of always been that way, you know, my entire life. I've always kind of needed to burn my hand on the stove to know that don't mm. touch the stove because it's hot, you know? Yeah. It's the Leo in me. I'm very, you know, adventurous in that realm. But yeah, I definitely, you know, learned a lot. But the... I feel like, like I said, you know, you just have to be tapped in with your source, you know, where where your energy comes from that you give to other people, you know, and you mm-hmm. have to just trust that in giving that good energy to someone that it's going to return back to you in a reward is it's going to keep reciprocating. You know, it might not come back from that specific person that you gave it to, but it's on its way, you know. You just got to keep putting more good and more good out there. You know, it's it's very tough to not become, you know, bitter from situations like that, especially when it's affecting your finances and your health and, you know, your just your state of mind, period. You know, it can be very distracting and discouraging, um, but rewarding still, you know, in the same sense. If you just keep the initial goal in mind and like i said you know you got to stay tapped in with with your source you know what is your source because everybody's source i think is different like and i guess that's my reality right because we all have different mindsets what do you think your source is my source is god my source and what is is god to you love kindness peace you know um all things good you know um my ears have opened so much 
just really um, over the last year, you know, um, and it, it keeps opening and I can hear God so much more clear the more I focus on him and and keep that in me, you know, and just keep moving forward. I like to spread the word of God. I like to spread love. I like to lead with love with anybody that I come in contact with, you know. I can't exhaust it, but at the same time, give it away because I know that I'm going to get it back. You know, I have a solid circle of great people in my life. So you are extremely humble, which I really appreciate. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But I feel like they don't know the extent of how professional of a dancer and how much of a career you've had thus far, because you've already had such an amazing career. You're going to have more of an amazing career. So tell them some of your credentials so they can grasp like this. He's not just dancing, which there's nothing wrong with dancing on the street. I do it every day of my life. Yeah. But this man has made money off of dancing. So tell them some of your credentials. Okay. So, well, let's see. Let's, let's start from the beginning. Um, professionally started dancing i was 14 well i started training at 14 and in my you know beginning stages um we were dancing and we were creating you know i was a part of this um club in my high school um it's called orcasus um and that's where i met uh, my first mentor her name was vegeta and she just taught me everything about dance hey vegeta you know, hey girl what's up <laughs> okay vegeta now get into it um, and, uh, yeah, so I did that for a couple of years. I was just training. I danced with, uh, um, a few companies in Chicago, real, really all the companies, the dance companies in Chicago from Coda was my first one. I danced with, um, Puzzle League for a little bit, um, Boom Crack. I did a few shows with them. Um, shout out to Matt and Davina and, um, Trey Turner um, all the Chicago heads that, you know, got me started, uh, Vegeta, Daz, Dre, you know, shout out to those guys. Anyway, so um, then fast forward to 2016, I moved to Atlanta and I booked my first major dance job as a TV show for a star uh, choreographed by Sean Bankhead. And that was um, an amazing experience. I met, you know, so many people and that was my first time really being in a space where I'm like, celebrities walking past me like oh my god it's queen latifah or you know so and so benjamin and lee daniel you know we literally sat in his office and watched you know this is before star even premiered because uh the episode we did was one of the first um couple episodes you know so yep we did that and from there i did star i did empire i did step up and then i started working with more artists um i did the trumpet awards with rosero mccoy we danced with ashanti keisha cole the brad seven streeter justine sky um we did um what came after that i did um tv show with uh aquaman and amy allen uh the the Watchmen. We did. Um, God, I love The Watchmen. Yep, we did the BMF premiere with Fifty Cent and uh, Snoop Dogg, Flo Rider, Jeremiah. Uh, yeah. So I want to talk about fear, fear, right? Yeah. Because in the process of doing all that, right? Right. Did it ever creep in, or like, did you ever get this sense of like? what am I doing here? Anything. And how did you overcome your fear of just saying, yes, I'm going to go to this audition. I'm actually going to move to Atlanta. I'm actually going to work with Sean Bankhead. I'm in a fucking office with Lee Daniels. Yeah. Oh, Queen Latifah. I know Queen Latifah. So where, where did you just get the courage to just go? Because with black people sometimes, and especially the way we get stuck, how did you not get stuck and was able to flow into the things that you wanted to do? Um, you know, God, God is the answer. <laughs> um, you know, growing up my, in my beginning stages, even when I did start training professionally when I was 14, I didn't have a lot of support. And a lot of times when I would 
caught myself leaning on someone for support um or you know just saying oh today was hard or oh man i don't know about this i don't know about dancing you know uh i would get a lot well then maybe you should try this or maybe you should do this you know something completely taking me further away from dancing it's like wait i didn't want to not dance i just wanted to figure out how to get through this so i learned at an early age um how to you know just take a breath and talk to god about it and push myself forward and keep pushing forward um and yeah, so I came out here by myself in 2016. I knew what I wanted to do. I had done all that I felt like I could do in Chicago. So, you know, I knew that when I came out here that it was time to really dig into the industry, you know. Mm-hmm. So any opportunity that I could get, you know, I took advantage of it. You know, I was trying to connect with everybody, you know, and I didn't realize as as easy as it is to come across somebody to stay in contact with them is the um is the challenge you know getting a job is not very hard it's keeping a job and staying on a job and getting another job with that same choreographer that's the you know the middle ground the game that you have to play um especially as a dancer you know so you know yeah, it's definitely scary, but if your dreams aren't scary, you know, maybe they aren't big enough, you know? Mm. So, you know, they, they have to, you know, kind of shake you up in a sense to, you know, keep you, you know, on your toes. You know, you don't want to slack off or be like, oh, I don't need this day or I don't need to stretch or I don't need to go take this class. Like, no, you got to keep pushing. You got to go get in that person's face. You got to get in this person's face. You got to, you know, talk to this agent or, you know, become friends with this director or this casting guy. You know what I'm saying? So it's just it's definitely a middle ground, a game that has to be played. Um, It's exhausting. It's very exhausting, you know. Um, But I'm I'm learning that a a lot of those higher heads have a lot of (laughs) bitterness, (laughs) It's a lot of uh, bitter um, people that are actually hiring people. So, you know, I don't know. It's strange. That's what I that's what I feel like. And and, and I want to I'm going to pin a question in the the um, the um, podcast and online is you get to this standpoint where you're making money. Right. Where you're doing what you love to do. You've gotten everything. You've kind of manifested this world that you thought that you wanted. Right. And then it feels like there's still this pain of trauma that a lot of people, especially these Hollywood heads and music execs are going through where they're bitter and upset. And so how do you think that we fix that? Well, you know, um, it's... Honestly, it's in a lot of industries. It's not just the dancers. It's, you know, entertainment as a whole. But, you know, in any industry, you know, it's, they're going to be those challenges. And I look at it as, you know, like your families. You know, we have to break those generational curses because mm-hmm. we are in a different time now. You know, we're not in the 70s and 80s and 90s where dance is kind of just kicking off as a, a, a commercial job you know I, I feel like the dancers um initially were making a lot more money and then somebody got in charge and it was like oh they don't need that much they don't need a thousand dollars to do this one video they can do it for a hundred you know somebody's gonna do it for a hundred and then you have that those dancers that are hungry and starving literally and they will do anything for a hundred bucks 50 bucks and the higher people they know that you know do you think that dancers are underpaid and underappreciated in the industry dancers are literally at the bottom of the pyramid Mm. you know um I know one choreographer that I met, you know, he was, you know, telling me a little bit of game in the, you know, industry in L.A. And he's like, yeah, we call dancers the bottom feeders. Bottom feeders. The bottom feeders. 
Wow. Yeah. But it's weird because without the dancers, it's like a, a, a painting. Yeah. Everything comes to life. And that's the problem well, with, go ahead. Yeah. Well, da- a lot of dancers, especially younger dancers, are ignorant to the business side of things. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you dance and you dance because you love it, you know, because you're passionate about it and it makes you feel good. So, you know, some people know that and they'll take advantage of that. Like, oh, yeah, they just want to, you know, dance, you know, just let them do it, you know. And then you have those dancers who've been doing it for a while. It's like, oh, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing that for $100, $200. You know, you're asking for a, a month of my time. You mm-hmm. know, you want me to be in rehearsals for hours and eight hours, but you only, you know, are paying Fifty dollars, you know. I was, it's so many crazy scenarios that I have experienced in Atlanta specifically. Is food included? Are y'all paying for food? No food, food is not no, no food. Gas. What? You know, and no that, water. No water. <laughs> you only get no water. Wait a minute. You gotta no come H2O? prepared. You better bring some water, some bananas to your rehearsal. Fight. You know, barely that. You know, it might be hot up in there. You might need another shirt. (laughs) So where's the common ground? Because I've actually, when I moved to Atlanta, it used to be like, I I used to say, I don't perform for free. Right. And like, I was like, nope, I'm not doing that for free and everything. So where is the middle ground as an artist, as a dancer, as an actor, where you say, I'm doing this because I love it, but I know I have to go to my nine to five afterwards, as opposed to I'm doing this because I love it and I actually still need to get paid. Because where's the balance? Where do you think the balance lies? Because if you go too far on the left of it and just yeah. do everything for business, then you get rid of the artistic side. Right. If you go too far on the right and you only do the artistic side, then you don't you can't eat. So what do you how do how do you get your sense of balance in doing things? Um, you know, it's a it's an ongoing process to figure out. You know, it, the middle ground is very blurry you know mm. i believe it's it's really it's really it comes down to energy you know and, and who you're working with and what the energy is like and you know like i said a lot of times you know we find ourselves in this position where you know we're coming up on the end of the month we got to pay rent and you might be 300 dollars short and this person is asking you to do this gig and you're like, OK, well, do I do it or do I not do it? You know, they offer me the gig. It pays two hundred dollars. It'll put me closer to my my goal. But, you know, they're also asking me to work for five days this week for eight hours. But they're only offering me two hundred bucks. So what do you do? Do you say no and, you know, try to figure out what else you can do in that time. Or do you just take the job and deal with it? You know, but if you take the job, you just got to deal with it. You know, you don't want to take that job and complain or bring your energy down or bring everybody else's energy down. Because at the end of the day, you did decide to accept the job, you know. So I think it's just that. I think it's knowing the camps and the energy that you want to surround yourself with. And, you know, feeding yourself through there, you know, because. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I I think that from what I'm hearing, what you say from your mindset, I think every dancer would benefit from just doing like a magic city job. Magic city is this wonderful fairy tale place that strippers are. But I feel like the thing when I think about a stripper is a stripper don't hit a pole unless the money is getting thrown and they don't take off anything until the cash is getting thrown. So like having that stripper mindset or like like with me, I, I come from the service industry and serving is very cutthroat. Like, uh, bitch, are you finna tip me or not? Yeah. I think having that sense of that, but also keeping the sense of how humble you are is why you've been able to keep a career in this industry because it's kind of like you have to have your yin and your yang yeah. working together, your dark and your light working together. Sometimes you bring in what are your what are your two? You have Charles and what's your dark side? My dark side. Yeah. Do you embrace your dark side? Um, you know, I I you're tethered. I, I like to keep him caged. You know, okay. um, when I do let him out, I just let him out of my room. <laughs> oh, yeah. what's his name? 
His name, Roman. Okay. Yeah. And there's times if someone is taking advantage of you, does Roman talk to you and be like, just let me out? Because I used to, at mine is Sebastian, and Sebastian will talk to me and be like, bitch, it's time to let unleash, unleash it, unleash it. Let me out for just a second and you can put me back in. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, we, we have a lot of conversations. I have a, a really tight grip on him. Good. Um, but sometimes when my guard is down, I'm caught off guard. Sometimes he just busts that door open and I can't pull him back in. You know, he is a lion. Mm-hmm. Um, his name's actually not Roman. It's actually Leo. Leo. <laughs> he's the one. <laughs> and yeah. Do you think he's doing it in the sense of to, because when a lot of people think of like the devil or the dark side, right? We think of it like it's being a bad thing. Do you think this person that no. lives in you is operating from a sense of trying to protect you yes, and your absolutely. best interests? So, because a lot of people run when I think of like religions in certain religions where they run from their darkness and they don't embrace it. So for me specifically, I've hugged that person and I'm like, here, come here. Cause it, this is trauma. Let's talk about this. Yeah. I understand what you're going through. How can I service this? What do you need to do? Do you need to scream? Do you think with the sense of movement and dance, is that a way for you to help Leo release sometimes when you're feeling that stress yes you know dance can definitely do that um you know since the pandemic um dance has kind of been a little shaky you know uh where you know we didn't have the same resources that we felt like we would have forever like being able to go take dance classes or be in a studio without having to you know be socially distant or wear a mask or have to do it over zoom, you know? So, um, it definitely opened my eyes, you know, especially at the time of, you know, life that I was in, you know, that stage, um, I was, um, between 25 and 26 when it first kind of kicked off and, you know, I had to reevaluate a lot of things and, um, I had to tap into myself beyond dance you know, and figure out what else um, is within me that um, brings me joy, you know, besides just dance and music. So cooking is definitely um, taking a, a big part of my last 365. Um, I've been starting a, a lot of business. I've been working with my family. My aunt, she actually owns a restaurant in Chicago. So we are um we're looking to you know expand you know open up a few locations throughout the country and can we come back like can you come back and like teach me how to cook something absolutely like maybe one day we can have a a, like, a tutorial a podcast day yes. we make some sweet potato pies or, or something some of your or... treats yeah your oh. special oh yeah treats. oh yeah because he makes special treats you want to plug in your little... oh yeah well uh yep bakery leaf atl yeah, um, y'all should come fuck with me. <laughs> yes, especially if you're in Atlanta. Treat treats. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, what? What? Wait, we're at 34 minutes. Yeah. Okay, so I want to go back and tap on something um, that we uh, were just talking about as far as that middle ground. Um, I think it's very important um, for us as dancers, seasoned dancers, and you know, more on the beginning side of things, to know your value. And, you know, your value goes beyond just your ability to move. You know, it goes into just your energy and, you know, people actually wanting to be around you. You know, I know some very talented dancers that have really nasty attitudes. And I know some okay dancers that have the best attitudes. And I, 10 times out of 10, rather work with them. You know, if the energy is right, if I can work with you, some people just take too much pride in their value and some people don't take enough. So I feel like that's where the the real um, the 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 middle ground can be narrowed down to that. It's really about you. It's about what you're willing to accept and what you're not, you know, and it's about not really being desperate to the point where you literally let people take advantage of you or just walk into it and say, okay, it's like, nope, I don't want that. 
you know, or no, I don't want you to treat me like that, or no, that's not enough, or why are you paying that person five hundred and you only offer me two fifty? You know, a lot of times, <laughs> ooh, don't get me started, Josh. No, get started. <laughs> sometimes they don't even, you know, pay you at all. You know, like oh, sometimes you got to wait a couple. Well, of weeks. we we're not gonna call these motherfuckers out, but you know, at the end of the day, rant and riff and ray because I know there's the thing is, it's like with having you on here, I know there's a lot of dancers that have experienced and artists that have experienced that, like where it's like, bitch, you didn't even tag me in the motherfucking Instagram post. Yep. And I just sat here and did this free shit. No ramen noodles, bitch. Yep, nothing. You know, <laughs> and that's, I mean, and that's for dancers. That's for choreographers, too. There's so many choreographers out there who are choreographing for all of our, you know, favorite artists. And they don't get that credit because that specific artist may have a choreographer that is there, you know, friend or whatever so their mm-hmm. friend is gonna hire like three or four other choreographers but they won't necessarily get to put that credit on their resume because it has to go under this person you know so that's it's another like some just, high school bullshit that yeah, I don't pretty have much time for. and it's like what happens is when it comes to like dance or when it comes to acting or when it comes to script writing or anything if everybody is hiring their friends and they all have a collective mindset you're not leaving room for growth it's yeah. like you're just going to have a whole bunch of collard greens, but you're not going to have the spinach. You're not going to have the sweet potatoes. You're not going to have all yeah. of the other stuff that encompasses a garden. So what happens is if you don't keep adding different people that are different from you and you don't work with different people, you only have collard greens to feed yeah. everybody, which collard greens are great. They make you shit. But yeah. And, you know, it gets really unfortunate, too, because I've honestly I've witnessed that and I see a lot of choreographers that will hire their friends and have a more difficult time getting a job done than just hiring more professional people. Because when you hire your friends, your friends like to slack off, you know, for the most part, you know, take advantage. You know, I've literally sat and watched people argue with, you know, dancers and choreographers arguing in a rehearsal. It's like, well, how can you do that? I mean, they're the choreographer, you know, you got to do whatever they say, but no, like that's not, I was just like, well, you fucking hired them. So, you know, you, you asked for the headache, you know, so why not give somebody else a chance? So I want to bring it back to like, when you were talking about the sense of like doing things for yourself and not worrying about what people think, it sounds like you're talking about the idea of your true self. Yeah. Not seeking validation. And like right now, Yes, and I'm on Instagram, I'm on TikTok, and sometimes I'm like, oh, bitch, this, this got me a whole bunch of likes and everything because it right. comes from the heart chakra. Like, it's something that I've learned. It's like, we, we're human. We like that. Yeah. But where, how do you seek your balance when it comes to the age of social media and validating yourself and not seeking it from other people? Or the fact, like, one thing that I deal with as an actor and have struggled with in my past is, like, booking like it's like oh i got a book i got a book and i got a book and then my true self may be like bitch why do you got the book because this person's booking no you could just sit there and just meditate yeah and and find the same joy so how do you get your sense of validation and your true and tapping into your true self well to be honest with you um i found so much peace and not giving a fuck Mm. You know, um, especially when it comes to social media and algorithms and having to do this and this TikTok and this challenge and that. And it's like the obligations of that are, you know, it's just it's weird. It's very weird. It's a lot of pressure that honestly I could do without. You know, I like my peace. I like being at home, you know. I don't like to stress about social media and I don't, you know, I'll, um, you know, I I have to post a certain amount just because, you know, that's the industry that I decided to work in. But um, it's really hard to, you know, stay on top of those things. And I honestly, I just choose not to because I feel like I'm going to connect with who I need to connect with and the people who need to connect with me will find a way to be you know um i post about my classes i teach three classes a week and you know i post when they're happening my classes grow so you know i don't um i try not to you know yeah i'll tap in as much as i can but 
at the end of the day, you know, it's only 24 hours in a day and mm. I cannot consume them with the internet and how I can, you know, bring people to me, bring, bring more people in, bring more people in, you know, no, you got to post and go. So I, I wake that. up in the morning, I do my little yada, yada, share this like that, you know, when, you know, support my friends that I do support, you know, wholeheartedly. And then I got to go on about my day. I had to take care of my dog. I had to feed myself. I had to clean myself, you know, get myself ready to do what I have to do. Because, you know, I teach kids and you got to be careful because you're not just giving them choreography. You're giving them their first experiences with dance, you know, so it's going to make or break what they do. So I have to be, you know, full and in, in myself and, and clear minded to do that. And I cannot do that and be consumed with the Internet. You know, it's a bunch of bullshit. It's, it's literally an a matrix. And if you don't wake up out of that matrix, you will get lost in it. You will die in it. <laughs> yeah. I want to um, let you plug yourself before we leave. Um, is there anything that you want to plug? Where can they follow you at in this okay, matrix? So at? In, this, in the matrix, you can follow me at, at Charles Guyton underscore. And that matrix would be Instagram. <laughs> Um, yeah, just connect with me on Instagram. Um, that's the best place to find me. Um, I'm not very active on Twitter or Facebook beyond, you know, my personal things like my family. You know, I like to stay connected with my family on Facebook mm -hmm. and more connected. My family is so like the guidance. I just I, I find a new guidance every day. Yeah, literally. That's how I feel about the Gilliards. It's yeah. like a big tree. Yes, the tree. I need to do my is huge. Um, family tree. I didn't. Yeah. I understand. I didn't understand how important it was, but it helps heal like generational trauma. Yeah, and, and we're really definitely the generation to to break those bad habits. You know, we get to shape the next generation of our families yeah. of the Guidance and of the Gilliards. You know what I'm saying? So it's beautiful. But um, yep, you can find me on Instagram. Uh, yep. Hit me up. You know, I teach on, um, I teach at I inspire, uh, on Thursday nights and here in Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia. Yep, yeah. That's in Atlanta. That's at 9 PM. So, um, yeah, you guys come on through, you know, it's a different vibe every week, you know, what type of dance is it? Um, well, it's more, I, I, <laughs> I try to be open. It's but it's 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 advanced it's intermediate. You gonna sweat? It's definitely a challenge. I, I've been in his dance class. Don't be coming in there thinking that you finna do like. I was like, I'm finna do a jazz square turn. No, Listen. I was like, whoo, I gotta sit down. <laughs> okay, he's First like, let's do all, it again. And wait. his energy is totally different. He's really chill right now. He's like, okay, let's go, let's do it again. I'm like, wait, what again? No, but oh. you nailed it. You did so good. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back you because like to. I literally psych myself out because I was like, I. I feel like I am going to die in this class. Uh, it was, well, but it was, good was for very me. high energy that it day. That really day we, what, what did we do? We did poison. We did poison. Yeah, we yes. did poison. That's a lot of energy. It's driving me. Yes, it yeah. was so good. Okay, that, that, so that, 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 that. Go I'm going to leave with this. Um, and make sure you guys are following everything that's Queen of the Ratchet. Everything. This is my question that I want to ask you. Yes. If you could leave this world, and Lewis, this guy that I follow on the podcast, he does it too. Everything that you've done in this world mm -hmm. is gone. Yeah. Nobody knows who Charles Guyton is. They don't know about the dancing. They don't know about anything. You are now entering another avatar. This person has died, right? Which I don't really believe in death. I believe that we go into another. I actually don't believe in sleep either. I believe that when you sleep, you're actually you're going into. Yeah, you're traveling. Yeah. So if there's something that you could take with the next lifetime or the next avatar body that you live in, what would you tell that energy, that entity, that shape that you become? I would tell them to listen to God, listen to that, that angel, that God voice. And if you really listen, you can, you can hear the difference, you know, because the devil will come to you in disguise as God disguised as God, you know, so you just have to, uh, I would tell them 
to just listen. Listen and, and listen to God. You know, I I can't say that enough. You know, um, when people talk to you, you can hear the difference. You can hear when God is coming out of someone's mouth and when the devil is coming out. And don't be a fool. When you hear the devil, it's the devil. God don't play as the devil. <laughs> so, you know, don't sell yourself short for you know the flesh or for you know earthly or worldly desires lead with love and love will come back and we'll end on love we'll end on love oh, thank you guys so much for listening charles will be oh, back thank you so much <laughs> thank you for having me bye guys bye. Hasta.